This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 137 Bachelor Party The next night, Caden regarded himself in the mirror, faded ripped jeans that hugged his ass? Check! Untucked button-down shirt and a dark purple with flecks of shiny stuff that skimmed his chest? Check! Leather boots with said jeans half tucked in? Check and check. Finished it off with a buttery soft leather motorcycle jacket? Priceless. You look ready for the clubs. Valerius murmured as he wound his arms around Caden's chest and kissed his cheek. And you smell as delicious as you look. It's your cologne. I wanted to feel close to you even when we're apart. Caden spoke to Valerius and his reflections in the full-length mirror. He also snuggled against the bigger man, relishing the natural warmth of Raziel's fire that seeped into Valerius' beautiful body. Ayolaire was currently enjoying that warmth, too. Both dragon spirits were rather bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, so to speak. They were excited for all these human mating rituals, as Raziel had described them dryly. Valerius' expression dimmed a little at the when we're apart bit. Yes, I don't know why we can't spend the whole night together. Kayla and Larian, they are insisting we do traditional bachelor parties where we're just with our friends and then we meet up at the final club, which is not traditional, Caden shrugged but they knew we wouldn't agree to not seeing each other before the wedding. That would never happen, Valerius growled. I must see you and have you near me no matter what, at all times, and... What? Why are you smiling so broadly? I was just thinking about when we first met and how you were ordering me out of your territory. Do you remember that? I was the dreaded boy and innocent and trouble, Caden laughed. You are still trouble. Tons of trouble. Valerius tickled his sides. Hey, hey, you're mussing the outfit, Caden complained. Valerius sighed and straightened it for him. You look very handsome, as always. I am jealous that anyone else gets to see you. The Razio wants you to preen. Our mate is the most beautiful. Let the others see him and weep, Razio proclaimed with a shake of its massive head. Ayolair twittered, going back to being mostly nonverbal, but its intent still got across as it looked proudly up at Raziel and sent a spout of snowflakes into the air. Ayolair is pretty chuffed by you too, Valerius. Kane grinned so wide his cheeks hurt. Did you know the press is making up supposed traditions for us? Most of them are based upon those alpha werewolf films. Valerius was frowning. I actually saw some author who writes a ton of those saying that she's starting a Dragon Mate series, Caden beamed, and she'll be using our wedding for inspiration. Valerius's head fell back as he groaned. She only showed me a fan art out of us, naked and making love. Now, it was quite good, but I did wonder if it showed the proper respect for us. It is incredibly respectful if anyone takes the time to make art of us, Caden assured him. They put their hearts on paper or the internet, and we should be honored by that. I would rather view 1,000 fan arts, even of questionable respectfulness, rather than going club hopping as Alarian plans. Valerius groused. If you were by my side the entire time, I could endure it. But Rose has something special planned for you. Caden turned around in his arms. I know, and I get it that you just want it to be you and me. Preferably in high reach, cuddled by the fire and eating roast meat, Valerius said. No one else! And it would be quiet, except for the snapping and popping of the fire. And that sounds really good to me, too. Caden let out a laugh and looked at his soon-to-be husband. And in two days, we'll get that for a really long time, until we start traveling to the other territories. Just you and me. That is two days from now. Frowny-faced Valerius was an adorable Valerius. Says the dragon shifter who has lived hundreds. Thousands, Valerius corrected. Caden blinked. Okay, thousands of years. Such a being is complaining about two days? Two measly days? Frowny-faced Valerius was unmoved by his argument. You have made me relish every moment with you, so yes, two days is long. 
A smile tugged at Caden's lips. Two days where we're with our friends, sharing with them, our people and the world, our joy? That sounds like a terrible fate. Terrible. The frown was wobbling. Yes, I'm sure. And we'll be tortured tonight by being forced to drink good drinks and eat good food and dance. If I have to dance with Alarian, that is torture, Alarius pointed out. I actually want a video of you dancing with Alarian if that happens. I'd pay to have that happen. Caden stroked Valerius's bare chest. His beloved only had on a pair of, what else, leather pants, no boots even. His bare toes curled against the floor of their dressing area. Valerius was delaying getting dressed. You know that even with the media restricted to official photos and video shoots tonight, that there will be plenty of people at the clubs that will record every second. Valerius pointed out, we will have no privacy. The Black Dragon King had said, that they should confiscate everyone's phones who were going into the clubs, or better yet, to have no people in the clubs at all while they were there. But Caden had nixed both those plans. They would be in a VIP area, and that would be private, but the club would be open to the general public, and they could bring their phones. The reason why was something Tilly articulated. I want to go! I should be allowed to go to your bachelor party, Caden! Tilly's voice had gone into that range that only 13-year-old girls could, piercing, but she didn't move Rose. You're going to be in the middle of the biggest party of the century tomorrow, Till, Rose had pointed out. Yes, but you and Wally and Landry get to go, Tilly protested with perfect logic. You really want to watch adults drink and be silly? Wally lifted a tufted eyebrow. I watch you do that here all the time, Tilly lifted an eyebrow at him. The places we're going don't allow for kids, Caden reminded her gently. You don't even know where Rose is taking you, Tilly stomped her foot. I don't, but I know that much, he said. Besides, who's going to take care of mom and dad while I'm out? They're going to drink and be silly, Tilly deadpanned. I know it's not fair, Till, but it's just one night, Caden said. Soon you'll be old enough to come party with us all the time. Yeah, and you guys wouldn't have aged a day, so I guess... Her expression, though, was still sad. Okay, since I can't be there, make me feel like I am. Pictures and videos and everything. It's such a big deal, and I just want to be a part of it. I just want to be a part of it. Those words had stuck with Caden, and he knew that Tilly wasn't the only one who was feeling this way. Caden thought how much he would have wanted to see Valerius marrying someone. Well, okay, he would be weeping if Valerius was marrying someone else because they were meant to be together. But the idea was that he'd be as obsessed with the dragon shifters' lives as Tilly, maybe more so. It was living a little vicariously through others, but Caden wanted everyone to understand that they were their dragons, and this wedding was theirs as well. So Caden had stuck to his guns, that people be allowed to record their experiences and share them. Fine, so when Alarian causes an international incident with his dogs, you will be the one explaining it all to the press, Valerius had retorted. He's not bringing his dogs, right? You're, you're, you're joking, right? Caden had blinked very hard. No, they are staying here with Tilly. Evidently, they adore her and she loves them. I can understand their affection, but hers? Valerius had shaken himself. Now, as Caden gazed up at Valerius's beloved face, he couldn't help but smile and feel tears prick his eyes. Happy tears. Unbelieving tears. This was his life. Valerius was going to be his husband forever. He had the most incredible friends. They had defeated the behemoth, and they were working on the other monsters that were much harder to kill, that were inequality and prejudice, but they had won before he believed they would again. I love you, Valerius, Caden said softly. Valerius's expression grew warm. And I you, Caden. They kissed deeply, eyes fluttering shut. Bodies swaying to music that only they could hear. If the knock on their chamber's door hadn't come, Valerius might have gotten his wish that they remain inside, alone, in their castle that night. But Rose, Wally, and Landry didn't even wait for one of them to yell, Come in! The three tumbled into the room. Seeing them kissing, Landry proclaimed, I was right. See, if we hadn't barged in, the night would be already over. Landry was dressed in a tuxedo shirt and black and white checkered pants. Her hair was drawn back in a bun, but somehow she still had hair covering her eyes. 
She was also carrying an open bottle of Veuve Clicquot that she took a swig from. You were right. Drink! Wally cried as he drank from a bottle of Guinness in hand. He nearly hit the balloon animal hat that he had on top of what could only be called a 1970s disco outfit in mismatched stripes and plaids with bell bottoms so wide that one couldn't see his feet. You've got to remember that Landry's human, Wally, so we can't get her too drunk yet. It's just the beginning of the night, Rose laughed. She had on some stylish black jeans and a bedazzled tight t-shirt with a very cute bee on the front. Her yellow and black hair was done up in two pigtails. Her makeup matched with her upper lip in black lipstick and her lower lip in yellow. Gold dust was sprinkled on her cheeks. Hey, I can drink you under the table, Missy. I went to prison and drank something brewed in a toilet. Landry poked Rose Belly with a champagne bottle. Rose wrested it from her and drank half the bottle. Shifters don't get drunk. Unless I put ambrosia in the bottle, Landry grinned. Rose blinked a few times and put a hand to her forehead. Oh my God, you did. So now you're going to get into the party mood, Landry laughed. Come on, Caden, you've got a drink and be drunk with us. I'm coming, Caden laughed. But where are the others? Oh, we will be picking up some dragon shifters and some swarm shifters and some, well, humans. And all of it on our way to our final destination, Rose told him, her cheeks now both rosy and glittery. Caden looked up at Valerius again. What he saw made him happy. There was no sadness in his black dragon king. He was grinning, looking more like he was excited. He framed Caden's face with his powerful hands. I'll see you later, Valerius said. Promises, promises. They kissed. And they only stopped when there was some hooping and hollering from below. Laughing, Caden jumped down from the platform to the bottom floor and landed in that perfect superhero pose. Wally, there better not be a black dragon balloon hat. Valerius called down, hands on his hips. It is not. No Landry here tells me that there's been a run on them at the shop. Wally informed him. I am trying to start a new trend. He turned so that Valerius could truly see the animal the hat was based on. It is my rat hat. Thank you very much. Actually, we have been selling some rat merch since it came out about Wally being such a hero and being Caden's counselor, Landry reported. What did I tell you? Once you have rat, you can't go back. Wally struck a pose. I think I need to have some of what you guys are having. Caden grabbed the Vuv Clicquot bottle that Rose offered him and took a big swig. His throat tingled as it went all the way down and his stomach felt warm once it reached there. Iolaire's eyes widened and its tongue slid out as if tasting the ambrosia. Now I understand. Remember the hangover, Caden, because I still do. Valerius touched his temple. Right, right, I'll be careful, Caden said and took a smaller swig before handing it back to Landry. Love you, see you later. He waved to Valerius, sending him an air kiss. A black dragon king waved back. The four of them then piled out of the room, buoyed by ambrosia and the excitement of the night to come. So, where are we going? Caden asked, as Rose led them to a black SUV parked in the courtyard. Simi was driving, and Nagoye was in the front passenger seat. Simi Nagoye, I'm so glad you're coming, Caden cried. The two claw captains were dressed in club clothes, but both shook their heads when Caden offered them the Vive Clicquot. We're working until we get to the final place, where, supposedly, we won't need claw security. Final place? Caden looked at Rose, but she just giggled and said nothing. Hi guys, it's Wraith, author and narrator of the gay dragon shifter fiction podcast, Dragon's Reign. This story ends at 140 chapters, which means that the last episode is coming very soon. But don't worry, I am turning another of my serial stories into the next season of this podcast. And the best way to find out what it will be is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. After the last Dragon's Reign episode, watch for the post-story live stream, beautiful new artwork, and trailers for the new story, and maybe even some behind-the-scenes content. I am sad to let Dragon's Reign go, but very excited to bring you the next chapter, so to speak, of paranormal gay romance. The first place they went was a gorgeous champagne bar on the highest level of reach. 
The bar was onyx. The walls were dark mahogany. The lights were golden and low. The champagne, top notch. There were these little puff pastry cheese crackers that Caden loved. There were also fresh oysters with tart mignonette sauce, huge shrimp with cocktail sauce so spicy it cleared the nostril passages, and crab legs covered in a delicate cream sauce that Caden licked off his fingers long after it was gone. Esme and Jahara were the hosts. They were both dressed in icy white dresses and had silver glitter on their faces. Ice buckets made of real ice held bottles of Krug, Moe and Chandon, Dom Perignon, and more were set out. Glasses were filled and toasts were made with the patrons joining in. Thank you so much for doing this, Caden said to Esme and Jahara. We did nothing, a little champagne, a little food. All that matters is that we get to spend time with you, Esme said as she patted his cheek. I remember when you trusted me with knowing you would do magic outside of your dragon form, Esme. That meant a lot, Caden told her. And it meant a lot that you trusted me first with your secret after I had made such a hash of it with my own people, Esme sighed. She brightened then as she said, you gave me the boost I needed to trust myself again. You're more than welcome, Caden told her. He then turned to Jahara. I was so afraid to meet you. My reputation precedes me, Jahara said with a wry smile. But you never had anything to worry about, Caden. I don't trust people easily. As you know, I've been let down. But the moment we met, I knew I could trust you. And that made me certain of my plan to ask the other dragon shifters to come to my territory and make it our territory. I think if anyone could have made that work, it's you, Caden said. Actually, you made it work, Caden. We're all united now in a way I didn't think was truly possible. You and Iolaire have made us a clan, have made us a chosen family, Jahara said. He embraced both women, feeling as if he couldn't put into words which each of them meant to him. Wally clinked a knife against his glass to get everyone's attention. He cleared his throat and adjusted his balloon hat that squeaked a bit on his head. I have the honor to give the toast to Caden here at our first stop tonight. Caden blinked. I met him while he was still in high school, which wasn't all that long ago. Wally grinned. Someone called out, Little Caden! Caden grinned. He was unsure of himself. He was new to greeting customers. I remember that he got so nervous on the first sale that he actually started paying them for their purchases. Wally chortled. I lost count, Caden laughed. What can I say? But though I feared the kid might spend me out of business that first day, I didn't regret hiring him a bit. Wally smiled at him with that big, silly smile that caused Caden's heart to hurt a little. Because I knew he was special the moment I laid eyes on him. I know people will think that I'm just saying that after the fact. But no, I knew. There was something about this kid Something extraordinary. Oh, and he became a pretty good damn salesman, too. So, to Caden. Wally lifted his drink. To Caden! Everyone cheered and lifted theirs. Caden hugged Wally tightly. Thank you, Wally, for everything. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, kid. I should be thanking you, Wally told him, his voice a little hoarse from tears. The champagne and food was devoured, and all too soon they were on their way again. Esme and Jahara, though, were not coming to the next place. They would meet up with them later. At, at the final place? Caden asked. The final place, but we're not there yet, Caden, Rose laughed, looping her arm through his and tugging him out of the champagne bar. Once more, they piled into the SUV with Simi and Nagoye in charge. They were laughing and talking over one another. The evening had just begun, and it had begun beautifully. Caden felt like his blood was filled with champagne, even though he hadn't had any more ambrosia. They left High Reach and headed down into the mid, towards an area packed with clubs and nightlife. They headed towards a bar known for incredible homemade beers and bar food to die for, while the other bar had been crystal and elegance. This one was scarred wood, pool tables, and dartboards. Tez, May, and Kayla were waiting for them there. Wally immediately headed over to the bar for a brew so dark and thick that Caden was pretty sure he could have stuck a fork in it 
and the fork wouldn't have moved. Ollie's mustache had its own mustache of bone. Tez gave Caden a golden brew that had a certain zing of grapefruit and lemon. He took a large grateful swallow. Kayla, who was in a spirited dart game, insisted on feeding him some pretzel nuggets covered in a hot beer cheese sauce that Caden wanted to eat with a spoon. Are Anwar and Alarian with Valerius? Caden asked Tez, not able to keep his desire to know about his soon-to-be husband out of his voice. Oh, yes. They're meeting up with everyone at different spots than you. Alarian has requirements. Tez's nose is wrinkled. Poor Valerius. Poor Valerius, Caden giggled. I'm sure he's having fun, or at least he'll have stories. I'm certain that Anwar will protect him from all of Alarian's antics, Tez said. Anwar is a new man since Fidel was found. And that was Alarian's plan, May said as she dragged a tortilla chip through some very creamy spinach artichoke dip. She had a pool cue in her other hand. She was playing against three burly men whom she looked at through hooded eyes as if she wanted to eat them too. They were looking back at her like they wanted to be eaten. She was wearing a silvery sheath dress with some very red lipstick. Kane realized that all the dragon shifters had some silver or white on them for him and Iolaire. He was more than touched. Alarian's really come around, Caden agreed. May's head turned from her prey to Caden, and there was a different look on her face. Because of you. Oh, no, no. More because of Valerius and Alarian himself, and because of you, May insisted. She pursed her lips. I'm not good at this talking to people honestly thing, but you should know that you've had more of an impact in your short time as a dragon shifter than most of us have had in centuries. Caden plinked and swallowed. That's amazing of you to say, May, but you've all done so much more than me. She smiled and squeezed his shoulder. But you've done what none of us ever could. Brought us together. Life is better with friends. She kissed his cheek, which had her poolmates groaning, but then she was quickly sashaying back to them. Come now, boys. How about we play strip pool? There was a roar of enthusiasm. And that's another one that you've changed, Ted said with the tip of his head back to May. I didn't change anyone, Tez. If I did anything at all, and I'm not saying I did, it was to remind them that they're needed, not just by their people, not just by their territory, but by us, by everyone. They just stepped out and met the challenge, Caden told him. Tears were running down Tez's face, and he clutched Caden to him. That's why Elderon and I love you, Caden. You're more beautiful inside than any of us. Elderon is more beautiful on the outside, you understand, but that is its nature. I know, Tez. No one is more beautiful than Elderon. Caden hugged him tight. If there's hugging going on, why am I not in on it? Kayla demanded. Caden and Tez opened their arms to make it a group hug. Why are we hugging other than for fun? Kayla asked. And why is Tez crying? Happy tears, Kayla dear. Happy tears. Tez assured her, and the hugging is because Caden is our friend. Lana knew he was going to be the one to fix things, Kayla said as they parted. Lana did? Caden wiped his own tears away. Oh, yes. Lana could see your soul and knew that you were the one, Kayla answered as she popped another pretzel bite inside. And you are. Everyone is happy now. Family, friends, love. Thank you, Kayla. Again, I'm not. You are, Caden. She then threw a dart over her shoulder that hit the center of the dartboard. The people she was playing against groaned. You won again, Kayla, one of them said. How about we play another round, double or nothing, Kayla grinned. Her offer was accepted. Caden was deep into beer, pretzel, and dip land when Landry stood on the stage where the band was setting up. She had a microphone in one hand and a beer in the other. But she didn't sway drunkenly. Instead, she almost looked nervous. Hey, everybody, I'm up here because I get to give the second toast of the night to my friend Caden. She pointed at him and people clapped and hooted. She swallowed and said, there are so many good things that I could say about Caden. Embarrassing ones, too. Here she paused as everyone laughed. But I like to focus on one of the qualities that Caden has that a lot of people don't. Maybe they're smart not to, but he's got it. Caden squirmed under everyone's stare. He wasn't that special. I Lair was. Caden gives second chances, Landry said, and there was a few scatterings of applause. And third chances and fourth chances, people laughed. 
the reason he does it is because he believes in the good in people. And I can honestly say that if he hadn't believed in the good in me, well, I'm not sure that I would have believed in it. He sees it in you, and you want to see it too. So, to Caden, they all raised their beers and said, To Caden! Caden blushed, but headed to the stage to help Landry down. He embraced her. Landry, I only ever saw what was in you all the time. Thanks for helping me find it. She held him tightly back. They played pool and darts and ate and drank themselves silly before Rose was, once again, taking Caden by the arm and tugging him outside. Once more, they piled into the SUV and were driven off safely. Though Valerius had been afraid of what would happen with him out in public, the truth was that people were friendly, but they didn't crowd him. They kept a respectful distance until he gestured for them to come over. So though he was the White Dragon King, and Iolaire was the most approachable of the dragon spirits, the public didn't take advantage of that. Or at least, that's what he hoped. They had seen him go after the behemoth. They had seen the behemoth. They might all be just a little more afraid of shifters now. Where next? Caden asked, shaking off those gloomy thoughts. The final place, Rose beamed. Everything's been so awesome. I can't imagine anything better, Kane admitted. Oh, I think you'll find this the best. It might even outshine your wedding, Rose chuckled. Now you've got me intrigued, Caden laughed. Simi actually drove them outside of the city on the winding highway, but then he was heading back towards Reach, to the gash. Caden blinked as they parked outside of the gash. The moment that Caden opened the door, he heard music blasting from inside. Rose took his arm and she led him inside. Caden gaped. The entirety of the below had been transformed into a nightclub. There were flashing lights and pulse-pounding music. Every door was open. Every business was serving drinks and food free of charge. Everyone was dancing and laughing and having a spectacular time. Rose took his arm. The below knows how to party better than anywhere else. Welcome to the final place, Caden. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Dragon's Reign. It's hard to believe that it's almost over. If you're listening to this podcast episode on Spotify, I really want to encourage you to come over to the YouTube channel so that you can see the beautiful artwork of Caden, Valerius, and all the dragon shifters in a special celebration video. After Dragon's Reign is over at chapter 140, I'll be posting trailers and behind-the-scenes content for the next Gay Romance Story podcast. If you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to know. I'm sad that Dragon's Reign is ending, but very excited to bring you the next story as well. So I hope you'll join us for the next adventure.